It's not very often, man, we have goats in the clinic. Yeah, usually we out chasing goats. Right, it's a lot easier to have them come inside in a controlled environment. No, 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 correct. Help me out chasing goats. I had done this one. I'm coming, Kayla. Good job, kid. All right. Having them inside in a controlled environment, because it really stresses me, man, to see you running behind, behind those animals, man. <laughs> so it stresses you. Yes. <laughs> that I'm running behind a goat. Yes, I'm That like, stresses you. Oh, oh, just, man, you just, you're wearing me out. <laughs> <laughs> On this afternoon, goats come in from pasture for a visit to the doctor's office. Hello, Dana, how you doing? I'm great, how are you? All right. So you brought us some babies today? We did, four in total. All right. We want to have everybody tested, see if they have worms. We're hoping that the females might be pregnant. I have my goats. We have brought them up here today for a wellness check. One of our other goats had worms, and I'm hoping that the two females are either pregnant or are healthy and capable to get pregnant. And how old is she? We think she's about three. OK. Heart sounds good. Yeah, we got a pretty big stomach here. But we are ruminant animals. Sometimes they're just big, but we'll see if she got some babies in there. OK, she looks pretty good. We're going to get a stool sample from her. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll take this stool sample and we'll take it inside and float it in a special solution. And then we're trying to find eggs in there. Okay. Yep, but you got some fresh over there. See, you just fell out over there to the left. Oh, yep, see yeah. it. No problem getting samples here. No, not from goats. <laughs> that's right. They're like, oh, you want it? Here, have yeah, it. That's right. We got plenty of sample. Yep. How old are we here? Uh, about a year and a half. All right, so what we're going to do? Check it inside, mm -hmm. try to get an x-ray, and then we're gonna set up our fecal flotation. You gonna follow mommy? You can follow mommy. Probably not. It's gonna, probably gonna be a drag the entire come on, way. Come on. Just in time, buddy. What you doing? Bringing a goat to you. I know I'm the goat. You're the greatest of all. All greatest of all time. <laughs> I am the goat. Okay, you finished, dog. <laughs> <laughs> we got a couple of goats here that are possibly pregnant, okay? Okay. So we wanna shoot an x-ray of a couple of them. Well, you know why I'm the goat? I don't even need an x-ray to tell if these goats are pregnant. Man, you can't even tell the time of day. It's hard to tell the time of day when you watch. Most of the time, it's inside of a cow or a llama. Hmm. So I still can tell better than you. I'm going to bet this guy. We're going to decide if these guys are pregnant or not. <sighs> Let me see. Pregnant, not pregnant. I'll tell you what. Lunch. Lunch. What'd you think? You call this one, I'll call the next one. Uh... <laughs> no, 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 no. I was hoping I could see the screen. Push him in the other room. No. Not pregnant. <laughs> huh? Not pregnant. Is that what you call him? Yeah. Well, you want either that or it's too early, but I don't All see right. anything in there. One for one? Who's the goat now, baby? Well, you do smell a little goaty. Oh, man. Well, I tell you what, lunch say you can't do it again. OK, lunch it is. So what you calling on the next one? The, the next, next one I will call pregnant. Double or nothing. You the big guru here today. OK. I think I see anything. Let's see here. So I'm gonna guess this one is not pregnant. Well, you just lost, buddy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm, I'm teasing with you. <sighs> what would you do without me? We're gonna ask you to um, go away, Dr. Hardy. I'm gonna go away. Two for two. I am the greatest, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, two, yeah. You know, I am the greatest, but and I'm gonna give you a prize, too. What's that? You get to check the fecal sample. That's too much love. That's just for you, bro. Thanks, man. All right, let's check this stool sample here. All right, so we do have strongyles, like hookworms and dogs are strongyles. So, Paul, we need to get some meds on board here. All right. I'll go and talk to her about it, okay? Okay. As Paul gathers medicine, <laughs> Dr. Ferguson breaks the news to the goat's owner. All right. Sorry, no pregnancies. It's okay. It'll happen eventually. Just as I suspected, we uh -huh. do have parasite, okay? okay. We're going to get us some parasite medication, and we're going to do it daily for five days. All right. And it's a liquid. In the mouth. In the mouth. Unfortunately, uh, our goats aren't pregnant, but um, I definitely feel much better that I know that even though they do have parasites, that it's manageable and they're going to be happy and healthy. So what's on? We'll get it together for you and bring it back out to you. Perfect. OK? All right. Be right back, OK? See you later. You have fun? <laughs> well, I guess it's time for lunch. I saw the x-ray. I mean, I missed seeing I didn't get a chance to see the X-ray. I did not get a chance to see. He cheated. 
Dr. Ferguson and vet tech Jordan make a trip out to Nicole's rescue to treat the latest animal she's been rehabbing. The weirdest pet I ever had was a brown recluse spider. Oh, yes. your friends were probably envious of you. You had a brown recluse spider. Yeah, I just thought I had this cool you looking brown be, spider in my You'll be the spider woman. I think I want a cow, though. You know, just one, maybe two. Yeah, you need two so they're not yeah, lonely. Yeah, yeah. You got some land to do it, don't you? Yeah. You know, since all the kids gone now, just Kim and I. Oh, are you sad? Am I sad? Are you sad about nah. it? No? Not yet, I don't think so. Then I call you and say, oh, Jordan, can I get a brown recluse? I want a spider or something. No, I'm going to send you some of my kids over there to hang out. Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Nicole. Hi, guys. What you got going on? You working here today? Yeah, something tried to get into the pigeon pen. I'm the CEO of Wildlife Critter Circle of Life. My main goal is to rescue, rehabilitate, and release the animals back into the wild. My ferret is really sick. Oh, what's going on? Well, it was my fattest ferret, and then he just started dropping weight. All right, let's go see the baby. OK. The ferret Oscar came to me from a hoarder. Hey, buddy. Come here. What's up, Oscar? He said, I miss my friends. The last couple weeks, he dropped weight, and it's very scary because there's no visual symptoms. His hair looks normal. It's just weight. Let's take a listen here. I can feel he's thin. Yeah, it's yeah. horrible. Yeah. Rapid weight loss in ferrets really concern me. They're not that large to start with. Even if we lose a couple grams or even a pound, that's very significant percentage of weight loss, and it can cause a whole array of things to go wrong. 1.74 pounds. So the wow. last time I weighed him was 3.2. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. We need to do some diagnostics and figure out what's causing this weight loss in this baby. I definitely want to get a stool sample. OK. To make sure that not some parasitic going on. We need poop. Let's go navigate through your cage. Let's see what we can find here. I'm sure you got something somewhere in here. Oh, there we go. We got it. Oh, yay. Good fresh sample. Since we're on poop patrol here, we can kind of evaluate this poop. It looks good. You know, the color's good. It doesn't look like any blood in it, and it's formed. So that's a good sign. We take it, put it in a special solution, and if there are eggs in there, it floats to the top, and we'll sit under the microscope. OK. When I'm waiting on test results, sometimes Jordan sings for us. Come on. Sorry, I can't, I can't sing. I'm not Dr. Hodges. You know, he likes to sing for he's you. He's a rapper. Oh, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, he's profound. The ferret is sick, and he's not feeling well. Need to bring him out of his shell. And I wish him well. <laughs> OK. Hey, you have to, I'm sorry. I'm, hey, you need Dr. Hodges. Keep your day job. <laughs> Go through the slide in a systematic approach, because it only takes one egg for me to see it to know that it's there. So I make sure that I cover the whole slide. And I have, and good news. I don't see any parasites. No worms. No worms. So it takes us to our next step, run some chemistry, run some blood, and okay. see if we're dealing with adrenal issues. I'm very pleased that Dr. Ferguson found no parasites. However, that means that it is something more serious, and we do have to wait to find out what is really going on with Oscar. You are done. Oh, he's a good yeah. patient. You are done, Funky Pie. We should have results back in a couple days. OK. And depending on where we are, we'll talk about treatments, like implants and things like that. So we'll go over that once we get the results back. Okay. Dr. Hodges and Dr. Ferguson have been a big help to this place because they have become the facility vet. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Always taking care of my babies. Uh, yeah, you have a good one, okay? We're a donation-only facility, and by them coming and caring for the animals, they get even more of a second chance. If it wasn't for Dr. Ferguson coming out, I don't know how I would be able to help them. Bye, buddy. Bye. Bye, ice cream man. Get him. Yeah, I'll get it. Got it. Good Samaritans, Taylor and Teresa, bring in a unique hit and run victim they found on the side of the road. Hey, y'all. Hey, how are you, I'm doing well, doing well. We talked on the phone last we night. We did. Let's take yes, a peek. He just looks around, I mean. Hey, bud. Oh, he's gorgeous. Yeah, he he's gorgeous. Isn't he, though? Hey, let's see if we can figure out what's going on with you. See his leg oh. is nice. Hey, bud. Up. I know. Hey. All right. We're here because we had rescued an owl last night that was in the road. We couldn't leave him there, yeah. you know, to get hit by a car. And went and got a box and went back and, and got him and put him in there yeah. to bring him. I think his leg is injured because okay. his wings kept going out, but he couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. He's beautiful, isn't he? He is. But it was like he didn't try to move or anything. It was like yeah. he knew we were trying to help him. I'm gonna go back in, see if I can figure out, maybe shoot a picture of this. Uh, give me one second, okay? Okay, honey. In my 20 years of veterinary practice, I've never treated an owl. We are critter fix the country vets. We treat them all, so if somebody brings in an owl, I'm gonna treat it. Go straight into the x-ray or? No, let's look at his eyes. Let's do an exam on Hey, Miss Al. My game plan with this owl is to examine it, treat it, and get it to a rehab so it can get back into the beautiful Georgia skies. Boy, you took a nice shot to the head, huh? Mm-hmm. Ain't no reflex on this side. Yeah, boy, that eye is not constricting at all. It should pinpoint, and these guys can see a mile away. Did you hit your head or something, buddy? Yeah, uh, he took a shot, definitely. Typically, just like with your physician, when we shine light into the eyes, your pupils should constrict. And when we remove it, it should kind of dilate. And on the right side, it's just huge. Let's hold his wing up. Good job. Yeah, Paul there. Oh, that's where his pain is. Right leg. Yeah, well, up here. Andrew. I need you to hold these gloves. So oh. I found this pain, I think. You did? Broken wings? Oh, uh, no. I think it's in here. So I need you to hold this paws for him. Gotcha. Somehow, let's get a picture here. Right in this area is where he's ruffled in. Right above his leg. Right above his leg. This bird is really showing signs of concussion and bad pain. So he's really in bad shape. What was it? It was a the right, right, right leg. We really need to figure out the extent of the damage because if it's too bad, a rehabber won't take it. And without rehab, this bird won't make it. Got a little pelvic fracture, man. Looking at his skull, there's definitely a crack there, but I'm really worried about a concussion. I mean, he lit, he took a shot. At this point, I, I don't know if this bird gonna live. They don't train you on owls and vesicles. They don't. Boss, I'm give you your best shot. That's all I can do. Dr. Hodges works on a concussed owl, hoping to get it rehabilitated back into the wild. You are seeing some stars. He is out of it, but if he didn't have a concussion, he'd be tearing our butts up. You know when you watch the cartoons and the little yeah. thrrr, little, that's what this guy's seeing. So this bird does have a small fraction of pelvis in the skull, but those typically will heal on his own. Well, I'm really concerned about this bird's concussion. I need to reduce the swelling on this brain, get you something for pain. Under, let me get some furosemide. Yes. And some pain medicine, injectable. And we'll kind of go from there. All of us have a brain in the skull. We have only so much space. And when we have trauma and it hits the brain and the brain starts swelling within that skull, you get some bleeds, you have some problems. So I'm giving some furosemide here in this muscle. See if you got him. I'm giving some furosemide, which decreases the amount of swelling in the brain and hopefully helps with this concussion. And this one goes PO, basically per os, by mouth. There you go. Something for pain. Such a gorgeous fellow. I've done everything I can for this owl, but here's an even bigger factor that would determine if this bird survived. Hey, Summer, Omar, the rehabber, you know, Omar. Yes. Can you get him on the phone? Okay. Right. Let me talk to him. Omar has taken all kinds of animals. He's a fantastic rehabber. I've seen everything from hogs to raccoons. Never an owl, though. But I know Omar is the guy for this job. Man, I got a, a case here I never had before. Well, I have. I know you picked up hawks and all this kind of stuff, but I got an owl. Rehabbers typically don't take every animal in, but if I can convince him to take this owl, I feel like there's a very good chance that this owl will survive. I think he'd be a good rehab candidate. Okay, today or tomorrow works, boss. Thanks so much. I just got off the phone with the rehabber, and the good news is he's willing to take it. And hopefully, if this owl, he'll be back in the Georgia skies. Where you want to go to the hospital room? Yeah, hospital. Okay. Derry, I got a new hospital patient for you. Come on. Derry is in charge of our hospital room. It's a dedicated area where we keep animals that are hospitalized or in intensive care. So I've treated this guy's concussion. I've treated the pain. Now we just gotta let this guy heal and hope for the best. Make sure you keep him alive. Sure, I'll do my best. Hey, how are you today? 
Nicole comes to see Dr. Ferguson to get the results of Oscar the Ferret's blood tests. How's my man Oscar doing? His weight is not good, but his energy is still good. OK, good. You should know he has Cushing disease here. Cushing disease is the cancer of the adrenal glands. So they're over-secreting enzymes, but the body's not using it. OK. So we're going to put an implant in. We're basically giving what we call exogenous hormones, which means that we're giving them from the outside so that they can be used. So it'll be just a little incision, inject through there, then we put a little glue back on top. OK. That'll be it. Adrenal gland implant surgery sounds much scarier than it really is. Oscar man going to be a new man. The implant does all the hard work of regulating cortisone in the body. We just have to get it in. All right, big man. Say no night. Right. Well, don't go right to it. <laughs> Check it out. Man, give, it, give it all to me. The reason we relax it, man, this needle is kind of big for a ferret. This is our implant. You can't see it, but it's in the needle here. And it's probably about the size of a rice grain. So interesting. Pretty big gauge needle there. Kind of scary looking, isn't it? We don't even use them that large in small animal unless we're doing a microchip. But you think about a dog is a lot bigger than a cat as opposed to a little ferret and they still have the same size needles. OK. Oh, he's thin, though, for yeah, sure. Yeah, let's do a little backbone. Yes. Yeah. All right. So the one I'm going to do now is just make a little small incision that we'll stick the needle through. That way we don't have to puncture so hard through the skin. There we go. All right. Ticker is ticking pretty fast. All right. So now we put the implant in. So you attach that to your syringe, Doc? Yep. So what we're going to do for this, rather than put a stitch, I'm going to take a little surgical glue and put it on top here. So everybody be consistent. We like to do it on the dorsal area, like right over the shoulder blade area. Looks good, Joy? Looks great, up? Doc. All right. We're going to wake the baby up. Good morning. There you go. Good morning. There you go. Come on. Come on. There we go. So what happened? So we're at 1.68. We're thin. You know, I like to be at least over two pounds, two and a half pounds. Hey, we got to get up over two pounds, but Oh, you're drunk right now, huh? Huh? You can't do it drinking, though. You have to eat. Basically, what we're going to do now is just watch the signs and see if this thing improved. Even within a week, we should have more energy, start eating better, start picking up weight, and just doing a whole lot better. All right, Mommy, we're back. Here he is. Yes. Hi. Hey, are you All right. sleepy? Yep, so we got a little area right there we yeah, shaved. Yeah. And we yeah. put a little bit of glue there, OK? So, but other than that, everything's good. This is my first time getting this done with any of my animals, and he was in and out in five minutes. Oscar did great. He's feeling perfectly fine, and I am so glad it was something so easy. We were one point six eight. Six eight pounds. So I want to compare when I call you. Let's see if we're picking up weight. I want to know how we're doing. Okay. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you. Bye. All Good right. to see you. All right. Wet back, warm water. Let me, let me look at it. An unexpected emergency has Dr. Hodges face to face with a bearded dragon in critical condition. It's a pet rat. He got out the cave and popped him. It looks like one time. We got a bearded dragon named Chippy, and the wife went in this morning to feed Chippy. I left the top off his cage. And one of our pet rats got in the cage and attacked him. Bit him on the side of his neck and skull. It was a pretty bad situation at the house. Good boy. Yeah, my six-year-old son's going crazy. Uh, we're going to get him fixed. Hey, I need that warm bath. Let's see what's going on. I don't know, bro. happened this morning at about 7.30 this morning. OK. And get him right on top of the head pretty good. Oh, boy, hang in there, buddy. Hang in there. Pet wounds are tricky. The first thing you want to do is clean this area off so you know exactly what you're looking at. You definitely got some head trauma for sure. Eyes are closed. He keep wanting to roll because his equilibrium is off. He doesn't feel normal. He wants to roll over. I don't know what's going on with the brain, yeah. I really need to know what's going on in his head wound right now. You ready, Paul? You ready? Well, let's make sure he doesn't have a skull fracture. If Chippy's skull has been fractured and it's damaged to the brain, he may be past safe. Oh, boy. Fracture right through the skull. This ain't good, boss. All right, man, it definitely went right through the skull. I'm going to give him my shot, but I mean, it went right through. Chippy the bearded dragon clings to life after suffering a fractured skull from a rat bite. It must have bit on the side, caught it here, and then caught him back there. Let's see if I 
I'm getting some for pain and some fluid. Reptiles don't really give any signs of pain, but imagine someone shot a nail gun through your brain. This is what Chip is experiencing now. So I have to give something for pain. Hopefully that pain medicine kicks in a little while. I'm just trying to give him a, a warm bath, trying to get some fluids in him. Okay. They will absorb water. Right. Just got a little blood loss. I gave him something to stop the, hopefully decrease the swelling on the brain. I'm gonna scrub it up a little bit more. I'm trying to hydrate Chipper by putting him in the warm water, but I'm also worried about too much swelling in the brain. So I'm actually giving her diuretic so that we don't get any more inflammatory response inside the skull. You need a better time or anything to scrub that up? Yeah, we'll just scrub it up a little bit and then give me some sulfacillin. Man, anything you can do to help myself. I got you, bro. I got a little boy. I know. I get it. We're going to do everything we can. We got a little boy we got to get you back to, bud. Chippy has some major wounds. I'm using surgical glue to close his wound, because the last thing I need is for a six-year-old to lose his best friend. All right. Polish, kind of just keep him there. Keep him up. Keep his head up. Keep him warm. Come on over me. Yes, sir. But the truth is, I've done everything I can. So it's just a terrible game of wait and see. Now. I've gotten it clean. I got an antibiotic started. I got him something on pain. I'm going to keep him hydrated. OK. We're going to say our prayers, keep our fingers crossed, and see if we can do our best. I pulled some miracles before, so I'm going to do everything I can. All right, man. All right, you want to say bye? My biggest concern right now is, is Chippy going to make it or is he not? So I guess you guys will call me? Yes, sir. If not, it's going to kill my son. It's in God's hands, basically, right now. See you later, buddy. Dr. Ferguson, Sierra, and Jordan are on their way to see about a mini horse and a not so mini problem. How you doing? Hi, how you doing? All right, all right. Hello, young lady. How are you? You gonna tell us what's going on? You can tell Dr. Ferguson? Skeeter's got a knot on her back. Do you know what happened? Hey, no. So you don't want to talk right now? So the baby has a knot on his back? She does. So Skeeter is about four months old. She has a knot on her shoulder back kind of area. I kept thinking she'd grow out of it. It just never went away. That knot's been there the whole time? Within the first month, okay. I would say it was probably the least. Enlarged or anything? It's kind of growing with her. I've never seen anything like it. And I've yeah. done horses for 20 something years. Yeah. I don't know what it is. You got my mind turning. Everything's turning up here like, OK, <laughs> what's going on? So let's take a look. Let's see what we got. Right. Let's see hey, what we're going to do down? today. It's a real mystery finding a lump in a pony this age. We have to find out what this thing is. It's right here. You know, initially when you hear we got a bump or we got a lump, we think about an abscess. We got an area that has some pus in it, a bacteria. So what I want to do here is Easy. try to get a couple of needle samples okay. and just see what we get in the needle, what it looks like. And then we'll make a plan from there. She got a bump over here. Oh, what you think it might be? Bone. It's a bone. <laughs> <laughs> if there it is, I'm taking you to work with me. If she goes to school to be a vet, it'll save me some money. <laughs> <laughs> we have to decide if we're dealing with an abscess or some irregular bone formation. Basically, what I'm trying to do is see if we can get any cells out of this thing to help us with some identification. Sometimes we'll just get fluid in here. Sometimes we'll get pus in there. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, there you go. There you you go. need to be careful. Come down. <laughs> oh, you need to come down. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. That's so sweet. <laughs> calm down. I need you at the office sometime, because they yeah. get to going. I need you to calm them down a little bit. <laughs> so it doesn't take a lot. You can see there's something on there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the first step is we're going to send these slides in. Depending on what that said, if it's inconclusive, we need to get in and get x-rays. If they tell me, bam, this is what this is, we make a plan from there. All right? We have a medical mystery that we have to figure out how to solve. It's definitely odd. Yeah. <laughs> We are excited to have Dr. Ferguson find out what this knot that we have going on is and if it's going to go away or if it's something that she's going to have to live with the rest of her life so we can prepare for her future. The cute little family right there. They are. I don't even like kids, but I, that little yes. girl melts in my Yes, yeah, she was yeah. cute. She reminded me of me, though. She reminded me of you. No, she wasn't me. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> She acted like she was going to start to push. She's done that twice. Okay. She looks like she's going into a soft contraction, but she won't actually push anything out. This morning, Layla had puppy number one, and we kind of stalled out. Layla had no progression whatsoever from then on. We're concerned that we've got another puppy that's trapped in the canal that can't pass and allow the others to come through. Everybody's in trouble, from all of the puppies to Layla. That's my baby, and my baby's fixing to have babies. It's 
very emotional. Let's get these puppies out of here. You just wouldn't deliver them for me, huh? I walk into the clinic this morning, I'm still in my street clothes, and I run into some old clients, and they tell me, Layla, the beautiful German Shepherd, had a puppy, but she hadn't had another one in 24 hours. And I know there's a whole lot more in there, so I gotta get those puppies out ASAP. Okay, Dr. Hodges is about to have a C-section. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna need all hands on deck. All right, let's see what we got here. So we're doing okay? Yeah. You. Of the problem, child. Sometimes animals' calcium is a little bit low and the uterus doesn't contract. So we have to go in and intervene and do a cesarean section. So I'm making an incision right here at the base near the cervix. This one is actually tight in here. Come on out of there, big puppy. Come on out of there. Hey, hey, where we at? Where we at? First one coming out. Good gracious. You need to call you King Kong. You got your pump ready and everything? Yep, it's all ready over there. All right, we got some work to cut out here. Come on here, come on. Come on, buddy. Come on out here. Big, but you ain't like King Kong. How we doing, boss? Nothing yet, buddy. Getting a lot of fluid out this nose. This is one whole puppy. Oh, wow. Yes, this is one puppy. German Shepherd puppies are typically pretty big, but these guys are really big. And I see why they didn't quite make it through the pelvic canal. There we go, there we go. Come on. All right, we might have some, man. All right. Puppy number two, coming your way. All right, you got two. You're okay, baby. Jeez, maybe I should call you guys. Ah, uh, you got some coming, huh? Hey, T. What you got? We got some problems. Well, I need you to hop on this one. All right. We're going to do something, man. Tell them we're going to be all right. Meconium is a thick, tarry feces that's typically released after birth. Oftentimes, when a pregnancy is stalled, the puppy will usually release this into the sac. So essentially, the puppy is trapped in a sac with his own poop, which can suffocate it. Get that stuff out of there. Talk to me, boss. No respiration yet. That was in kind of rough shape, man. Yes, sir. Just got a lot of fluid in those lungs, so we're trying to get this baby to talk to us. Come on. Come on, brother. Talk to me now. Come on. I hear you. Got that. Oh, boy. I got one that I'm going to have to do an umbilical hernia here. I mean, he got a whole, everything's hanging out. This poor puppy's intestines is actually coming out of where the normal umbilical cord would be. Get this one up, and then I'm going to bring him back and try to fix this thing here. It's a mess. If I can't get these intestines back in really quick, this pup is definitely gonna die. Make sure you keep this on. I mean, he's his whole everything hurting you. So I need to get him up, and then I'm gonna bring him back and fix it. As Layla, the German Shepherd, undergoes an emergency C-section, several of her pups struggle to survive. I ain't never seen that in 20 years. I got a pup coming out with meconium. I got a pup that's unfortunately come out that has his intestines out of his body. This has been a really, really high stakes labor. Come on, gotta stimulate you here. Come on. Man, you been sleeping long enough. It's time to get up now, man. T, we got a problem on this one, too. Coming your way. Y'all got a free hand? That's all, Hodges? That's it, boss. How I many we have at? One, two, three, four, five, six. Four of them doing pretty good right now. We're working on two, trying to get them going here. They have a heartbeat, and they had a lot of fluid in them. So we try to get those lungs all cleared up. You already got puppy breath. See, how my hernia one doing? Not great yet. This puppy has a hole, and literally, through this hole, the intestines are actually coming out. <sighs> Boy. Intestines everywhere. How we doing? How we doing good. When intestines are exposed and the whole, what we call peritoneal cavity it is exposed, you get peritonitis. And peritonitis is an infection in the abdomen. And it's oftentimes fatal. Need me to wet it a little bit now? Yeah, please, Josh, for saying what I'm also worried about these intestines drying out. If these intestines dry out or are damaged some kind of way, this puppy doesn't stand a chance. Come on, puppy. I ain't never done this before, bro. Like, I ain't know if I was gonna get that in there. Come on, puppy. What's the issue, Doc? Can't get in there, man. I just can't get, I can't get to my hernia ring. This is harder than doing a C-section. A hernia ring is actually the combination of what we call fascia and muscle tissue that has become weak, and then the intestine or fatty tissue comes right through. How's it going, man? A little tough go? Yeah. Closing the hernia, typically, it's not terribly hard, but closing the hernia in an area about the size of a toothpick is really testing my medical expertise. You don't want to go, do they? Come on, I'll just he was there. Get in there. I like your clothes right there. I think you got it there. You all right? 
Yeah. I didn't think it was gonna go. But intestines back in. It'll take a few years off you, at least a few days, don't it? <laughs> Long time, man. Damn, tough. So I'm good now, though. You got it now. I don't think y'all know how much we appreciate y'all. Y'all are amazing. Yeah, well, that's what we're here for. Good deal. I feel the heartbeat. I got so emotional. And I knew if I didn't get those intestines in, this dog wouldn't go live. But I couldn't stop trying. I was asking for a miracle. I got it in. I didn't think it was going to go. It's all good. Good. Hopefully it's puppies, okay? I did my best. Just a little challenge to start out. That's all right. Start out small, and we're going to pass up everybody. Dr. Hodges was able to work his magic, and we have a healthy puppy. You know, took me years off my life. You better eat. <laughs> I've been up for 48 hours. Layla's been in labor for 72. She can now rest and heal and take care of her babies and watch them grow. That's your babies. So I stopped and picked up a little helping hand here. Hey, Nicole. Hello. You're not missing class, are you? No, it's not until 6. So OK. You have to be a good student first before anything else. So. Uh, I'll train you well, then. Uh, or at least you know what to say. Which one? A little bit of both. A little <laughs> bit of both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're headed back out to see Skeeter. You know, he had that lump on his back. Yeah. So we got those results back, and it's actually inconclusive. The first sample that we took from Skeeter, after sending it to the lab, it was inconclusive. So getting a biopsy would definitely tell me whether we were really dealing with a hematoma, which is basically just an accumulation of cells, something that's benign, or we are dealing with cancer. Hello. Hey. So how you doing? Good. Good, good, good. Think any difference in the size? About the same. About the same? Mm -hmm. okay. Dr. Ferguson and I talked after he got the results of the first labs, and uh, I did not expect to hear the word, you know, malignant, benign. I expected no cancerous terms at all. So what we plan on doing is trying to see if we can get a little biopsy sample of it. OK. And then take a look at that and try to be a little more definitive. And then we'll talk about options okay. on where we go from there, Sounds OK? Sounds good. The difficulty of doing a biopsy on the animals awake is the animals awake, so we have to use a variety of medication, local anesthetic, as well as we have to restrain well. I brought three techs with me today to make sure that this pony stays where it needs to be so I can perform my procedure. Making marks like a plastic surgeon. Maybe. Yeah, so I make sure I'm inside. You know, once I get a local, I won't know where it is. All right, here we go. Ready for some injection? Oh, yeah. Don't like that, huh? I'm going to put a local anesthetic around the area where I want to take the biopsy from so that it's as painless as it can be. So you don't feel the future pokes, OK? What I don't want to do is have to give general anesthesia for a procedure that's only going to last about five minutes. Mm -hmm. Ready? Mm-hmm. Good job, Skeeter. To get this biopsy, I really want to go deep into that growth so I can get a good enough sample so when the report comes back, I feel comfortable with the report. OK, OK, don't, don't I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's OK. I'm sorry, that's all we need. That's it. That's it's deep okay. enough. Yep, the worst part is over. Put a couple of stitches in here. So hope we get some good results back from this biopsy here. Yeah, hopefully so. Yeah. Now, if it regresses some more, we may not have to do anything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's a little area. It may drain a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to spray a little spray here so okay. the flies don't get on it. I will definitely be anxious to get the results back um, on this biopsy. What we're going to do what's best for her in the end is it's not about us. It's about her and her quality of life and, and her living her best life. Hopefully, it comes back benign. I'll wait to hear we from you. We have that report back. Then we'll contact you, and then we'll make plans from there. OK. We'll just play it day by day and see what we can do. Mm -hmm. All right. I just never expected a four-month old to have maybe a cancer. Yeah. Dr. Ferguson has Skeeter's biopsy results. Hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, good, how are you? Doing good. Got your results back. No cancer, so everything looks good. Awesome. We got the best results we could ask for. The lump on Skeeter's back came back benign. It looks smaller last time. How's it looking now? It looks the same. No large or anything like that? No. Well, great. I suspect this lump on Skeeter will go down on its own, and Marissa's daughter will have Skeeter for a long time. 
So I think what we should do is just let the baby keep living and let's just see how it goes. It shouldn't cause any issues. If it does, give me a holler, but that's good news. We don't have to do anything else. That's very good. Yes, ma'am. All right, so give Skeeter a hug, and if you need anything, you let me know. I sure will. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I went the wrong way. And you remember that bearded dragon that came in with his hole in his head? Yeah. It definitely went right through the skull. I pulled some miracles before, so I'm gonna do everything I can. He made it. I mean, he was like a miracle. He pulled through. What? I yeah. thought he was a going. Ah, oh, man, he's doing good. Wow. All right, buddy. Look at him. Before, it was not just blood. It was kind of seeping goo and everything. But right. It's not seeping anymore. Come on, big buddy. Tippy looks great today from what we brought him in. He's moving around a lot better. He still has a little head issue with him, but, uh, I think we're gonna be good. I think he's happy you're here, huh? If you put him flat and he can bounce, he'll actually pivot. Keep doing the baths all we can. If you can do three or four warm, do them. Okay. That's gonna keep him hydrated. It's a miracle that Chip is still alive, but it's gonna take a lot of nursing and TLC to stay that way. How often are you feeding him a day? Uh, two, three times. Yeah, we have bug tweezers and we'll get him some tiny, some extra small crickets. Yeah, I, I think that's great. If he eat it, I'll be so happy. This pet is very special to little Trey. So to know that Chip is going home with Trey, even if he's with him just one more day, it makes all the hard work worth it. You try the crickets, do the bath, and you make it work. And at least he won't run around my room anymore, Mike. You never know, man. He might. He might. He used to be running around your room, then, you know, you never know. He gets to come home. He, he gets to come home today? Yeah. I'm so glad that I have my best friend Chip be back. Tell him what we're gonna do first. We're gonna go get him some what? Crickets. Do you think I should try to put them on my nose? No, I don't think you need to put them on your nose right now. <laughs> the good news is it's a very sweet cat and has worms. Now here's the bad news. Dr. Hodges speaks to a client who dropped off their newly adopted cat they found limping in a parking lot. It appears they have a broken leg like shattered at the top in probably one of the worst spots it can be. While it was dropped off this morning to see exactly what was going on, they found it in a shopping center parking lot, so they don't really have any history. But after examining Wally, I noticed he has a broken leg. T. Yes, sir. As usual, you playing with puppies. <laughs> how, can you how can you resist that? <laughs> playing with puppies. Mm -hmm. Well, can I get you to come do some real work besides playing with puppies? Besides playing with puppies? No, I just want to play with puppies. All right. All right, I guess I'll come. Oh, man, what you got? This cat got hit by a car. Looking at Wallace's x-rays, unfortunately, splinting or actually trying to put a pin in wouldn't really be an option because this leg is actually shattered. It would be a very, very long, painful process. I can do a couple options, but you have to make a choice. What's best for this animal? I don't know if that will form a fibrous joint there, so I need to be left with one option. Amputation is probably going to yeah. be the best bet. I mean, he'll walk out of here. Oh, it'll do fine. And now it has a home, so I guess that's a game plan. We'll amputate. All right, make the thing better. All right. All right. Wally's leg is fragmented into pieces, so amputation is probably going to be the best outcome to relieve this animal from pain. Night, night, bud. It's OK. Doing a amputation, there won't be any pain or arthritis. Wally will be sound and probably run around in a few days. All right, give me 10 minutes. We'll be eating some food. This is probably where the car hit in the impact, because I can feel the bone here. That feels bad. It look bad. I'm just hoping when I get in there that it's not so booger up. So it actually fractured across the bone. You could actually see shards. Boy, it's nasty. So I'm worried about that femoral artery. Oftentimes when you go in for a surgery with an amputation and a leg is just busted apart, you got to think, there are really, really a lot of big veins. And the femoral artery is there. And it is really one of the bigger arteries in the actual body. So you have to be really, really careful. You cut that femoral artery, it's bad news if that happens. And this cat will die. I'm looking for that artery and vein. Dr. Hodges is carefully amputating Wally the cat's left hind leg. There's a nerve, the big nerve there. Sometimes you hit cut that and the leg will actually jump. All right. Oh boy, poor cat. So it actually fractured across the bone, sheared all the way off. 
Yeah, he was in some tremendous pain. Pain tolerance is amazing. I would have been crawling on the floor. So this is where it broke actually off. Bring that together. Get this piece of the quadricep and to join the rest of his quadriceps friends. It should fit together like a glove. Everything good, man? Close them up, boss. Yep. And that back, man? Hold on. <laughs> My back hurt. Hold on, hold on. Get you, man. Uh, uh, you feel like that thing that go with your back, man? Uh, How you feel, man? That's better. I think it took everything out of me now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sit down somewhere. <laughs> Sit down. Everything went well. The leg was really, really, really in bad shape. I mean, it was just crumbled up. But gonna wake up, and by this afternoon, I expect for this cat to be walking. You look good. No more chase in the parking lot. You're good to go, boss. Right. Ted, you it? All right, we go. You remember that German Shepherd that came in that was just filled with puppies? Yeah. Come on out of there, big puppy. You need to call you King Kong. You okay, baby. But well, those are some big dogs now. Well, hey, there you go. All the babies with the mama. Layla's doing great. <laughs> she did great with her babies. I couldn't be more happy with them. With the puppies, with her, we definitely wouldn't have the healthy puppies that we do without Dr. Hodges and Dr. Ferguson and his team. I wouldn't change anything for the world. It's amazing. I just, you remember the cat that was found in the parking lot? We called him Wally. Whatever happened to Wally? Well, I don't know if that was form a fibrous joint there, so he just be left with one option. Amputation is probably going to be the best bet. Oh, yeah, Wally's doing really well. You know, man, it's, it's amazing. I mean, how how well these cats do, or any animals do, with three legs. It's like nothing happened. Hey, Life-saving surgery. Exactly. Oh. Hey, hey, good Wally. morning. What's up with my parking lot? How's it going, man? Yeah, he's ready for that cone to come off, too, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Sorry, bud. Here we go. Wally's doing great. He's been climbing all over the furniture, and he's chasing all the other cats around more than they, <laughs> than they want him to. That looks really good. Oh, yeah. You pawing at me? <laughs> You would have thought Wally was born with three legs, and he's been used to it this whole time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, nothing ever happened. Yeah, hey, you, you ready to go. <laughs> We've been going to Dr. Hodges since they've been here, and I knew Wally was going to be in good hands whenever we brought him here. You good to go, my friend. Perfect tripod. <laughs> I've never seen a three-legged cat before, and the first one I get to see is ours, which is awesome. Wally's definitely part of the family now. He's here to stay. I can still see him. Come on, I got you. After a little R&R, &R, she's ready to go home. It's time for this wild owl to return from where she came. Welcome back to your area, because uh, Teresa, we found her in this area. So, yeah. So that's why we chose this area. Right. And, uh, so she'll have plenty of food. This owl is doing so much better. Thanks to all the hard work that Dara has done and Omar has done. You know, when you brought her in, I was really worried about it. She had just a starry eye and gave some meds, and I was able to get some of the swelling down. I felt like, OK, it's time to release her to Omar's care. Rehab is his specialty. As soon as I came to see her, I was just like, goodness. Whenever we took her to the rehab facility, she took off. She was tearing up, and so we originally so thought it was a pelvis right. issue. Right. But it clearly wasn't. It clearly wasn't, <laughs> but as soon as she got that starry-eyed concussion under control, she... She's wanting to go. This bird pupillary light response is much better. The bird is able to stalk its prey. The pelvic wounds, as well as the skull fractures, are starting to heal. That'll take a little bit more time, but this bird is ready to go into the beautiful Georgia skies. Let's let her go out here in this beautiful pond. Let's do it, Dr. All right, Hodges. so I'm going to kind of hold for it, and I'll let you lift the top. I'll kind of hold it here. All right, see you later. All right, baby. Bye, girl. All right. Three, two, one. There she is. She's That's free. That's it. That's it. That is it. He's so, saying, thank you, Dr. Hodges. That is it, Dr. Hodges, sir. No doubt. Hey, man. That's what it's all about. Thank you so much. I mean, good job. I see her fly away. I'm looking at her flapper wings. I'm looking at the wingspan. I'm looking at the movement. I have no doubt this bird is going to be fine. 20 years as a veterinarian, my first time releasing an owl. First time working on an owl. But that's what it's all about. <laughs>